What is up, everybody? I see everybody starting to join in. Very cool. Um, I need to. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Very cool. Good morning. How are you, Carlos? Morning. Doing well. Good morning, uh, whoever that was, maybe Vina. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, that was Vina. <laughs> okay. Good. Good morning to you. All right, so uh, this morning, welcome to the training. It's 10 o'clock uh, Central. Before I get started, I don't know if you guys uh, watch the news at all, but the Midwest was pounded by that tropical storm that came through the Gulf. I think it missed you guys down in Florida, but holy cow, we had tornadoes and power out and like from the afternoon all the way through this morning it's just ending right now and I was uh, a little skeptical whether we have uh, an office or power or everything but I walked in today and everything is great um, and so all good in the world so and we just take it as a positive all the grass and plants got watered very well and I uh, I hope nobody got hurt and there was a lot of tornadoes in the Midwest it was crazy but hopefully no one got hurt and no damage there, but we are good. Uh, so I want to welcome everybody to today's uh, training. It's going to be kind of a continuation on yesterday. And let me get my screen set here. Um, so if you guys are in the back office and you have... Uh, what's that? Oh, I, I think I got... Uh, hold on, let me go ahead and mute... Let me go ahead and use my mute powers. Boom, okay. Boom, boom, boom. Huh, okay. Maybe that was me, got it, okay. Uh, I thought somebody had a question. So, we, I, hopefully I'll leave time for, or I'll definitely leave time for questions. But it's a continuation off of yesterday. You know, um, if you've been in the back office, you're going to see a couple things change over the next couple of days. Thanks to Dina, she's been helping me out a little bit. Uh, what I, I'm going to make it so that you can reach all the worksheets and all the training videos at any time. Even though you're going to get deliverables on certain days, if we go through, like today's training is all about the physical system that we have. If we go through that that training, let's say, and you're not there yet on the agent bro bro broker blueprint, you can still access it. So that's what I'm working on today and tomorrow a little bit. Um, we're going to be doing some new uh, video uh, kind of trainings uh, that I'm implementing in there as well. As you could probably see, our lighting's a little bit better. I brought in some lighting. Uh, so we're going to be starting um, some of those new videos on the training there as well. So welcome to today. Uh, we are going to be talking about the FISBO system today. As you remember, yesterday's training was about expired listings. And so as we've been talking, you're going to hear me talk about this idea of getting to something called Basecamp. Um, uh, and what is Basecamp? I'm gonna open this door, it's a little, uh, it lets a little more air in. What is Basecamp? Basecamp simply is this. It's getting you to the plateau where you're gonna have five to eight closings per month. And again, if you can get your mind wrapped around that, where you are now with your closings and where getting to the point where you have five to eight, that's a monumental task for anybody. Um, most agents don't ever get there. 87, per, here's the stats, 87% of agents that get their license never get there, ever. And they fail, they quit, they, they drop their license, they move on to something else. That's not you guys. 87%, um, that's a large percentage of people that, that don't make it. So that's what Agent Broker Blueprint is for, and that's what... Um, the idea of getting to base camp is this first plateau. Can you go on from base camp? Absolutely. Uh, so you go to base camp two, maybe base camp three, so on and so forth. So today, what we're going to cover is FISBOS. This is going to be another way in addition to the um, expired listing training yesterday that's going to help you get there. This by far 
is the best FISBO system around anybody, that anybody has. If you implement it, that's the real key there. If you implement it, there's a lot of, uh, a lot to this, uh, but if you implement it, I can for sure tell you this is gonna get you at least six additional listings for the year. Yesterday was 12, so that's 18 already. Uh, this is at a minimum, by the way, at a minimum. So a FISBO listing provides an excellent opportunity for Anton agents and brokers, especially newer agents and brokers. Uh, these listings are a bit more difficult to convert, but with this system and your hustle, it should be, um, it should give you a minimum of at least six new. I'm saying way minimum. FISBO leads are the second most profitable lead source for top producing agents. Remember, yesterday, expired listings, the most profitable uh, source. So this is the second most profitable source. So here's a little bit of some stats. These shocked me, by the way. These shocked me when I went through here. The median age for a FISBO seller is 60 years old. 65% of FISBO sales were by married couples that have a median household income of 94,000. FISBOs typically sell for less than the selling price of other homes. When I say FISBO, by the way, I'm talking about for sale by owner, for sale by owner. Um, uh, FISBO homes sold at a median of 200,000 last year, the same as the year prior and significantly lower than I'm not sure why that is uh, spelling it that way, but I think there's a different font there. That's okay. Hold on. Boom. See, I got to, this gives me a chance to get in there and correct all the spelling, but it still did. I'll worry about that later. Uh, significantly lower than the median of uh, agent assisted homes at 280. By the way, these stats are stats that you should bring with you at your meeting. You should know these and say, this is why you should let me sell your home. Uh, I'm gonna get you more money. Studies have shown that, uh, stats have shown that. FISBO homes sold more quickly on the market than agent assisted homes. Um, uh, and there may be a reason for that, by the way. They sold more quickly. Most of the time that's because they were sold to a friend or relative. 58% uh, of FISBO homes sold less, uh, sold in less than two weeks because again, often uh, the homes are sold to somebody that knows the seller, okay? So that's why they went the FISBO route. But that's the median, like that's not, that's not the norm. If you go and, and look at FISBOs right now, you'll see you've got FISBOs on the, come on the market all the time and there's some that stay for a long, long time. Those are your target. About 80% of, all, this is a big one, about 80% of all FISBOs end up using a licensed agent to sell the home according to the National Association of Realtors. So be, uh, because you already know this, these are some of the best leads you can have. The best leads you can have. And, and really the idea of, um, Let's leave that in there. Despite they're a bit more challenging. With you knowing this and you knowing the uh, stat yesterday about expireds, this is where the new agent or the new agent that is not doing a ton of business right now, this is where you should start. Um, build your FISBOs, build your uh, expired listings. That Those two things alone will not only get you good uh, organic leads, but this will get you uh, leads period. And this is going to get you leads that you can capitalize on. What's interesting about uh, agents in the marketplace, and we have a, you know, uh, I know Carlos talks to a lot, actually Rita talks to a lot. You know, one of the things that they oftentimes look at or are looking for are leads. There's leads all around us. We just have to implement the right system and we've got to implement our hustle. I know everybody on the phone here is a hustler, so that is good. This is gonna play right into your mix. If you're gonna go out and spend money on leads, you might as well spend it on yourself. You know, the, I'd rather you know, invest in Starbucks cards and sit with people that their listing just expired than uh, you know, give the money to Zillow or Realtor.com or you know, any of those. 
uh, the interesting thing about those is they're not giving you leads, they're just giving you contact information. With FISBOs and expired listings, these are leads. These people wanna sell their house right now. And so, of course, you're working on the listing side, but listings are great because um, you, uh, uh, you, know, you have other agents showing your homes for sale. Now, there's a, a lot of work to be done there. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit quicker than I did yesterday, because I really wanna make sure I, I uh, have time to get with you guys in your questions. So I may not hit all of these 11 reasons a homeowner um, that is a FISBO should be using you, the agent, but uh, let's touch on a few of these. The FISBO market share is shrinking. Uh, that is according to the National Association of Realtors. The price isn't right. Uh, while location, location, location might be the home's mantra, as a home seller, that's one variable you really can't change. Instead, the key factor to selling your home in a reasonable amount of time is pricing it correctly. <coughs> I'll tell you a funny story. Um, most uh, people that are selling their house on, uh, as a FISBO, uh, of course, do a little research. In 2020, our uh, clientele, our, our prospective clients are the most educated they've ever been. So our clients are buy, sell, rent. You guys know that. They're the most educated because there's the most uh, data in the market for them to use. So where do they go? They go to places like Zillow and Trulia and um, you know, all these other sites to get their homes valuated. And it could be off one way or the other by 8%, 10%. On average, it's about 8 But the interesting thing... Um, uh, the interesting thing about uh, having a FISBO price their home is the idea of the fact that they're off. They haven't priced it correctly. They haven't studied the market. If you're getting your numbers from Trulia, Zillow, anything else, um, you're, you're going to be off. And this is why. This is the main reason why. Um, they, uh, when they crawl the uh, county websites, in county data at the recorder's office for their information, they're getting every transaction. They're getting inheritance. They're getting um, quit claim deed transfers. They're getting, you know, all these, they're getting, um, you know, sometimes when you have a sale by contract, um, rent to owns and lease options and all of those things, those get recorded as well. So the price could be up or down significantly based on that fact. The MLS does not do that. That's why all of these, t t Zillow and Trulia, that's why they're trying to get the MLS data uh, because they know that's the most accurate. And I'm not knocking any of these things. I think it's going to happen, by the way. I think the National Association of Realtors is one of the most strongest number one lobbyists in the country, uh, number one. But number two, they're, they're almost uh, a union, if you will. And I do think that that, that tech will out pace them. I think that tech is going to take over the MLS eventually. It's not here yet though. And that's why this system is so important. So the price isn't right typically on FISBOs. Uh, yard signs and newspapers just won't cut it. So uh, again, you know, I tell everybody, hey, build yourself up as the market expert. Um, you know, uh, Dina's done a great job of this uh, lately with her videos. Carlos has done a fantastic job at this. Uh, Jen, uh, I don't know if she's on the, the call here. I'm, I'm naming names. You guys don't even know some of these people. But uh, uh, that's why I want you guys to be the market expert because when you go to the expired listings and sitting in a listing agreement or a meeting or sending that expired letter out to them or sitting with a FISBO that we're talking about today, they're going to check you out. They're going to go to your Facebook page. They're going to go to your YouTube channel perhaps. And if it doesn't seem like you're the market expert, they may not use you. That's why doing that groundwork early can really, really help uh, you out. So yard signs and newspaper ads don't, just don't cut it. When you go in and say, hey, I market in different ways, you better be able to show them how you market. Uh, I've got a great social media following. Uh, we do a lot of video work uh, kind of thing as well. Um, now watch this. According to the National Association of Realtors, this is still the top FISBO marketing method. 
yard signs, and newspapers. As 36% of would-be sellers rely on yard signs. The key word here is would-be, since only 10% of all buyers actually find their homes via yard signs. You see that? So uh, again, I know we put a lot of uh, focus on uh, getting our signage in the yard and things like that, but only 10% of the buyers find your house by a yard sign, and that's what FISBOs really rely on. Um, and then statistics are even more dismal for sellers who choose print media, since only 1% of buyers find their homes through newspaper ads. Again, all these stats should really be thinking about no, you know, understanding and really kind of knowing that you can use in your, your meetings and your repertoire when you're sitting with them and just in conversation, just you know, if you were out as the restaurants start to get open again, if you're out and about and you're like, uh, uh, you're talking to someone while you're waiting for a table, uh, you can do something like this. Just have a general conversation like this. Say you're talking with, with Tom and Mary and they, they said, yeah, our home's for sale. We're selling it ourselves. Fisbo, again, always agree with them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm a realtor and I, I you know, uh, can understand why you'd want to, you know, some people would want to sell their homes uh, by owner. Uh, how are you marketing? And then ask that question and they're going to go, well, you know, we're, we're, um, we definitely got a, a for sale sign in the yard, of course. And then um, we're doing some things in the newspaper. Um, and, uh, you know, we're thinking about some other things. At that point, you can interject and give value. You're not going to be there to sell. You're just going to give value. And so value would go something like this. Hey, you know, I've been in this business for two decades and sold a lot of homes. And just something that you might want to think about or chew on is number one, less than 10% of people that buy homes find their home by looking at the yard sign. Less than 10%. Think about that. And when you talk about print ads, like newspapers, like you're doing less than 1%. These are studies done by the National Association of Realtors. So what you might want to do is put yourself in a position where you're marketing it online through social media, because this is where people's attention is. And hopefully you're going to sell your house. I hope you do. You guys seem like great people, but if you need more helps or tip, I'll help you. I'm not looking to list your house, but if you need more help than that, call me. Boom. Here's my number. Again, I'm not selling them on the fact that I'm going to list their house. I can pretty much bet though that they leave that conversation after they haven't sold their house for 45 days. And they're going to go, where's that guy's card? He has some really good ideas. Let's call him. And then what might happen is that might lead to a sale, but that's planting a seed. That's all I'm doing. And um, it's really interesting how people have those opportunities every day and they just pass them up. So don't be afraid to market yourself without marketing, sell yourself without selling. Meaning just like that, if you give enough value, people are going to come back to you anyway. So just thought you want to um, just uh, think about that. Number four, Craigslist, a little creepy. I've talked about this before. I don't know if you guys have been on Craigslist before. Um, I'm sure you all have. Uh, when it first came out and the internet was rather younger than it is today, it wasn't so bad. But now with everything so fluid and techy and beautiful on the internet, when you go to Craigslist, you're like, it's like a throwback to the, the maybe the 80s, which I love that decade, by the way. But Craigslist can be a little bit creepy. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. They're free for sure. One of the things that I would encourage you to do is not think so much about Craigslist, but think about Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is also free and it's not as bland. And there's a lot more um, energy there because of the popularity of Facebook. So I would just kind of give you that as a tip rather than just stick on, uh, on Craigslist and have that option. Um, since NARS 2014 housing market profile uh, shows that 90, I, I actually should have carried this on, but that's okay. You're going to get the point. 2014 housing market profile shows that 92% of all homes use the internet to help them in their search. I would guess that's even a little bit higher today. Um, 
And it's, uh, these online classifieds are also seen as happy hunting ground for scammers, criminals, and dangerous people you really don't want to be associated with or have it uh, going into your homes. So make sure that number one, you're using safety. I didn't go into that here, but using agent safety is real important. Uh, all of you guys have signed the policies and procedures manual. If you go in there, we have a whole section on being safe. Please go over that. You know, that's a really good review annually for people, but go over that. Please stay safe. I, I would not want anybody under our umbrella to be put in a dangerous uh, position, but that's the, the um, kind of the negative of the internet. It does allow that to happen. So um, anyway, just wanted to throw that out. Um, Realtors don't have to resort to dubious ba bargain basement listings, but can instead list your home on highly qualified sites as Zillow or Realtor.com. Yeah, that's true. Um, you should be doing that. As a matter of fact, when you list with Anton, and this is one of the things that you want to uh, tell your clients, uh, they get automatically put on, hold on, where is my Anton site? Okay, watch this. If you go to the Anton site and you go to Why Choose Us here, uh, you know you can go all through this if you'd like, but when you list with us, maybe some of you didn't know this, it gets listed automatically on all these sites, all of these sites. So you're already covered by Zillow and Yahoo, AOL Real Estate, Trulia, you know, all these things. Um, uh, you know, all, all of them. So don't, you know, make sure that you understand that we're getting much more exposure to th than you would think just on the MLS. So it gets, when you list with us, it goes to all these sites. That's something that you should talk about. Um, that's something that you should talk about with uh, your clients uh, and go through this, you know, go through the website. There's a lot of great, um, things on here from you know getting licensing updating your ce of course we got anton gear by the way did i mention that to everybody if you go here you can buy anton shirts hats whatever you want there's backpacks there's anything you can think of with anton now remember i'm not real big on marketing anton as much as i'm big on marketing you but nevertheless it does show a little professionalism if you wanted to do that uh, this is where you get into your back agent training. Uh, I, I'm sorry, the back uh, uh, office. This is your training here, John. And then other things. But anyway, definitely go to here to find out what your, um, why choose us. Uh, we also have a what's your home worth uh, side. But let's see where I was. Don't be afraid to use all those. Um, realtors have all the right tools. That's another one. Uh, they can't buy it if they can't see it. That's about exposure. Uh, you don't want, you don't want to waste your time with bargain hunters. That's true. You're drowning in paperwork in case you have, I'm sorry, in case you're not already getting the picture, selling your home is pretty hard work. Not only do you have to find in vet potential buyers, but own. But once you've found that buyer, then the real headache begins. Every detail must be attended to in order to make the sale go through. And what's more, if you neglect something crucial like mandatory disclosures or inspection reports, boom, disclosures or inspection reports, you might find yourself facing not only the loss of a sale, but potentially legal repercussions. How about this? What if a homeowner because they're not trained in ethics, number one. They're not trained in, uh, for instance, racial discrimination, which is a, a huge topic today. Um, but let's say that a homeowner for sale by owner and, and they do something, you know, somebody's purple that walks in the door and purple is a protected class. And they say, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't sell to purple people. That could get them in really, really bad trouble. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm making light of, uh, of that uh, in a little bit from a FISBO perspective, but it's a very serious thing. We never want to put a client in a perspective um, a problem as an agent, but homeowners don't know that. When they're selling their house on their own, they don't know that. So that could be a huge, huge ordeal. Hiring a selling agent doesn't, uh, agent needn't cost you a penny. 
uh, you can go that route. In fact, you might even make money with a realtor. And there's some stats too. This is something that you should probably think about as well. Um, the average FISBO home sold last year for 208,000 while the average agent assistant home sold for 235,000. Like do the math there, it, you know, hey, who doesn't like an extra 28 grand on average, right? Um, this means that an agent assisted home can net you about 11% larger sale. Use these stats, they're given to you by the National Association of Realtors. Assuming you paid a 5% agent commission on $235,000 home, or 11,750, you still would come out about $14,550 ahead. Looks like a win-win for everybody. So this is something as we move on these FISBO leads that I think is really interesting that not a lot of people know about. Um, and when I first realized it, it, it really made the idea of leads and lead generation um, easier for me. And what does that mean? That means that if you go to Zillow and you type in, you go under uh, sell, um, and I'm sorry, you go under uh, buy and you go under for sale by owner, you're gonna have all these dots pop up that is for sale by owner. And that would be uh, something that you're definitely gonna wanna tie into. Some MLSs now are also showing for sale by owner, some do not. So you wanna look at this, but the reason that I like Zillow for this, and I like Zillow for the tech side of things, and you probably heard me talk about this in a presentation a couple of weeks ago, uh, and is because of this. You know, when you get these leads in, you don't necessarily have the contact info, but if you go to Zillow and you find a, 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 some houses in your target area, did you know that they give the property owner information right here? Typically the name and the phone number. In this example, it's just a phone number. But this is where you get the contact. You get fresh FISBO leads weekly. Like I would check every day. I would have this in your repertoire, your toolbox. I would have this set up. Um, if you've, by the way, if you, this is where I'm gonna hold everybody accountable. If you've heard me talk about this before, maybe a few weeks ago, maybe uh, a few months or several months ago, let me ask you this. Do you have this implemented? Is this coming into your inbox or is this an exercise that you do weekly to get these leads and are you marketing to them right now? Because you could be having sales and lead flow right now from this. And if you didn't, that's okay. I'm not here to come down on you, but I wanna get you guys to base camp and I, and I know how to get you there. So what I would do if I was just starting out or if I was a new agent that maybe I've been an agent for a while and I don't have a ton of business right now or I'm just getting my license, which we have a couple people that are doing that right now. What I would do is I would implement the expired listings program from yesterday. I would implement this FISBO listing system today. And I, and I assure you, you're going to have leads every week that you're going to have to work to close. And that's where your sales skills and, you know, some of that comes in. But that's why I'm here. I will help you get to that. But if you don't implement these, uh, then, I, you know, it's hard to get those, those close, those sales. Remember, organic leads are always better than non-organic leads. Always. They're less expensive. These are the first and second most profitable leads for a successful agent. <laughs> and the great news is, the great news is, is you can put this on automatic pilot. You all should, you all have a, a, a CRM system that is uh, in your back office. Uh, I would use it. I would go in there and I would, let's see, I would, here it is here. <clears throat> I know I'm skipping around a little bit. And for some reason, the internet is a tad slow. I don't know if that is because the power was off a few times, but this is it here. Uh, this is going to be, you know, your contacts here, and this is how you're going to add a contact. And then from there, once you get a contact added, once you get a contact added, then you can do all kinds of things. So let's go here. So if you go to this uh, perspective person, let's just call it uh, McCullen. McMullen rather, right? Um, you've got their phone number. 
but you can do all kinds of stuff from here. And you can obviously have the phone number in there. This will auto populate when you do a deal. Uh, this is uh, their other information. What activities have gone on here? This is a more simplified one. Shows how many active transactions. Oh, did I do a transaction with, let's just call him Al uh, Kibler. Did I do a transaction with Al? Boom, I can see what that is. And then I can manage them. Um, so I can manage them in a, a, a lot of different ways there. Uh, but you've got a history of what you've done with them as well. So, you know, I don't, I haven't done anything with this person. That's why nothing's listed here, but you can record phone calls. You can, um, you can schedule meetings, things like that. This is, you, you know, you can add private notes. <clears throat> this is a basic thing. So if I contacted this person, I'm going to put a journal entry in here. Uh, that type of thing. This is a basic CRM. You're going to get this. This is another one that you could use. Where am I at here? Where's my guy here? I don't have it up. One, it, there it is. It's called Copper. This is a little bit more of a um, uh, elegant system. This is going to be about 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month. It does more things. The reason that I like this one so much is because it automatically talks to um, my Google email and my Google calendar automatically. So I don't have to do much uh, with that to be able to talk, have all my systems talk. <clears throat> the the, 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 the uh, fact of the matter is here, I don't care what you use, I just want you to use something. So uh, implementing this FISBO system and implementing um, the uh, expired listing system that we went through yesterday, you're definitely going to need a CRM and you're going to want to need one as you grow that's going to be ro more robust. So you might want to go from our back office, uh, maybe to a copper, or if you guys want to use the back office, uh, Property Line has a, a, a really super expanded system that, that you can get yourself, property base rather, that's who owns our, our back office software. So uh, if you need help with that, I'm here, I can certainly do that. <clears throat> Probably the best thing, and we're gonna wrap up about 10.45 so I can take your questions with this. And by the way, we'll do questions with this or even whatever we talked about yesterday as well. But the reason that I like this system so much is I give you all the scripts here, all the scripts, uh, in blue is what you would be saying as an agent and uh, in, in uh, the dark gray here, this is kind of what the prospect would be saying. But you should be going through this. You should be practicing this. Um, I give you some things to think about here, but I also give you some things that are going to be coming up as objections. And you know from our sales training in module five, that you're going to get objections anytime you're in a sales role. All of you are real estate agents, or just about. Um, you, and even if you're not, you're in a sales role, right? Uh, but you all come across objections. And the good salesperson is the one that can handle those objections with ease, no problem. So for instance, um, if uh, you know, you're talking to somebody and they say, we decided to save the commission and sell it ourselves. If they say that, that would be something that a FISBO person would say, right? Or would say typically, right? So you might say, well, hey, I agree with you. Remember, always agree to the objection. Always, no matter how silly it sounds or how obs obscure or off the wall it sounds, agree with them. It's going to be really important that you do that uh, because it, it bonds you. It, it gives you commonality and it aligns you on your side of the table. You're not being combative with them from a psychological standpoint, but also from you know everything else uh, going. If you can get on their side, you're gonna be in a lot better shape. I agree with you that you can save on commission by selling it yourself. Did you know though today that there are you know, 40 houses for sale and that last month only you know, three houses sold? Did you know that? You know, in the, there's a way that you wanna bring this up. That's an X month supply of houses. If no other homes come on the market, only 2% of the houses sell by owner, which means 98% of the houses listed are sold by real estate agents. 
do you want more than a 2% chance of selling your home? I'm just asking. And by the way, I don't care if you use me or anybody else. I'm just curious at this point. See, I just let them off. Like, you don't have to use me. Like, that's the, that's the whole thing. Uh, I teach a lot of things that, are, that sound different. Um, I, might, <clears throat> I might start this sentence uh, or this conversation like this. Hey, listen. I don't really even care if you use me. I'm a licensed agent. I love what I do. My clients are, are, uh, are happy when, you know, uh, we get uh, their goals um, solved for them or their issues solved for them. But let me ask you this. Um, don't you want more than a 2% chance to sell your house? And you might say, they might say, well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, studies have shown that 98% of the sales that happen with houses on the market happen with a licensed agent. Uh, for sale by owners or FISBOs have only a 2% chance of selling. Then you can go into the numbers. <clears throat> but again, treat it like a conversation. Don't treat it like you're being combative. <coughs> Man, hold on, standby, coffee break. Yeah, coffee. That's a big, that's a big cup. That's not, that might be Dunkin' Donuts. I got to see what was going on at the house. Um, don't be combative. Don't act like you know way more than your client. Don't, let's talk about posture for a moment. We talk about that in sales. Uh, I've been a part of groups that have this idea of posture. I have something that you need. Do you want it? Do you want it? You know, kind of teasing them. Don't do that. That's not a way to sell. A way to sell is, hey, I've been where you are. I can help you. Um, I'm just like you. Let me, you know, service, be of service. And when you be of service and you give value, you're going to have these people coming back. That's the posture you need. <clears throat> um, so that's one way to say it. Another way to say it is this, you know, most top agents and A buyers will never really look at a FISBO um, and the buyers who will consider buying a FISBO will want to save themselves commission that you're trying to save. You know, if, if it's for sale by owner, immediately when they see that FISBO sign, they're like, ah, I can save some money because he or she is not paying an agent. And so they get into this mindset where you're going to uh, have a prospective seller come in and lowball you. That's a big issue and problem. So you could start that conversation that way, but look at it like this. Statistics show that FISBO sell for almost 10%. Actually, it's 11 point, I need to update that. For about, I should say about 11%, that 1% is big, about, about 11% less than houses listed with a professional. Um, that means you could have me uh, market the house and pay my fees and still walk away with the settlement table with more money in your pocket than you would have if you would have sold it on your own. Um, you ready to put me to work? Let's go. You know, that type of thing. That is where this takes practice. I got all kinds of scripts for this. In, in module five of Agent Broker Blueprint, um, there are a ton of scripts in there, a ton of scripts. And this is something that you should be practicing with. Your spouse, your significant other, practice in the mirror, practice in the shower. Never, and I know that sounds goofy. That's where I practice. I, and it, that's a little awkward. I get it. Um, and I didn't mean to paint any mental pictures for you guys. But practice, man. This, all these scripts here take a little bit of practice. Like when somebody comes at you with an objection, you should know, how, you should know what you're going to say. It might not be exact. You don't have to say it verbatim. But you definitely want to put yourself in a position where you're combating that objection. Let's do one more, it's 1039, so let's do one more. Hey, we wanna try selling it ourselves. Totally understand uh, the thought of selling it yourself. I mean, let's face it, saving that commission can mean some good money in your pocket, right? See how I'm agreeing with them? I'm playing right into what they want and they're gonna be like, right. So I'm curious, are you familiar with uh, the difference between passive and active marketing? No. Uh, real quick, passive marketing is basically sitting around doing nothing, like holding open houses, sending out flyers or advertising in the newspaper, which you know they're going to do, um, where you think you're thinking about doing, or were you thinking about doing any of these? Yeah, I was afraid of that. You know, these methods only work about 25% of the time, yet agents 
sell this concept as if this was the answer to all your problems, right? So again, I'm uh, aligning myself with them. We're both on this side of the table in our debate, right? Um, uh, which, which makes you think, what's so hard about that? I could do that, right? Right. The problem is this doesn't get the home sold anymore. Do you understand now that what I mean about passive, right? So sitting around with your fingers crossed, waiting for the buyer, right? That's not really the best way. Active marketing, on the other hand, is literally getting on the phone every day and personally contacting as many people as I can, 25, 50, even 100 people a day. The key is asking them if they would like to buy your home, if they know somebody who would like to buy your home, or if they would like to sell their home. Do you know why I ask them if they'd like to sell their home? And they're going to say, no, why? Because the more signs I have, the more buyer calls I get to show your home. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that does make sense. Now, which way, passive or active, do you believe will get more homes sold? They're going to say passive. And do you understand that I'm doing active marketing on you right now as we speak? They're going to laugh. They're going to, yeah, yeah, I guess you are. So how many people do you think you could call uh, every day to try to get your home sold? How many people do you think? I don't know, not 50, not 100, probably not even 25. And by the way, have you ever done telephone solicitation before? Have you ever, you ever called anybody? Do you even have a list to call? And so that's a little bit more aggressive. But um, when you start, they start to think about it like that, you're making it sound like it's a big pain in the ass. And you know, it is. All of you guys know selling houses and buying houses and representing seller buy sell rents is not easy. But now you're painting this huge picture like it's Mount Everest. At the, the bottom line is this, you should be generating your CRM so you have a list of buyers that wanna buy in that area. Um, if you've looked at uh, the training in the back office we did a few weeks ago, might've been last week actually, um, on, uh, no, it was the one before the video stuff, so it was two weeks ago, where we talked about um, finding buyers and finding sellers and using tech to do that. It was a really good training and that's a really great way to develop your, um, your buyers list and frankly, uh, a list of sellers, right? But right now we're focused on buyers. Keep them in your CRM, do a newsletter, make sure you're communicating to them, have them on your social media. Um, that way, when you do have a house come up in Springfield Estates at 1234 Main Street, and it's a three, two, a three bedroom, two bath house, you've already got a list to go to and when this particular FISBO seller checks you out, they already know, oh, they must have a list ready to go. They're going to use you. If they don't list with you, it's okay. Uh, the reason I say that is at the very least, you want to get them to give you an agreement that says, hey, if I bring you a buyer, I'll pay you a commission. Isn't that almost just as good? Now, you're not getting both sides of the deal, but isn't that almost just as good? Hey, if you bring me a buyer, I'll give you a commission for sure. Make sure you have a buyer's uh, representative agreement, perhaps, to ha maybe have the buyer give you a commission, but definitely that seller. Get an agreement in place with that seller to give you uh, a, a commission on that. And that might be, uh, by the way, if you go back to your real estate school, uh, one of the things no real estate agent uses is they only, they only use an exclusive right to sell listing agreement today, pretty much. They don't use the open agreement. They don't use any of the other agreements. This is where those agreements come in place. You're talking to a FISBO and you're like, look, I don't want to list your house, but if I do bring you a buyer, would you agree to sell me a commission? Great. Then you're going to give them, get them another type of listing agreement, like an open listing um, agreement. Uh, so go through those. It's important that you do that, but you got options there, right? You should be making money in any way that you can. All right. It's 1045. We're going to wrap this up. I just want to follow these last four things. This is an agent broker blueprint. Uh, matter of fact, I've made this available as of last night. I was working on this. Uh, you can go in there and, and uh, even if you're not at this point in the training, you can pull this uh, worksheet. Um, things to do prior to converting FISBO leads. Do your research first. Research the listing first. 
be open to negotiation. Don't be easily discouraged because this is a tough thing and follow up after the contact for sure. Just because they say no today, it might be a different story in 45 days and stay in communication. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, do you have, what about questions? Anything? Give me a question before we move on. I got here. a quick question, John. Yeah. This is Carlos. Hello, everyone. Um, I saw earlier you were giving an example, a numbers example. I'm trying to remember, you know, I was trying to keep it in my mind where it was. It was a number example, almost an equation of uh, the price that they would actually be able to sell it for if they worked with you based on the fact that they are sold that, you know, less and less is, uh, I think, is money, where they basically they can make money if you were to able to. Yeah, so um, the equation on how much they're going to sell their home for if they use an agent, is that what you're asking? So, yeah, and you were using it a, a little while ago. You were just using an example. Hey, listen, if you, you know, how it's being sold 11% less, yeah. FISBO individuals who sell less than what they're asking for, what I can, you know, based on my fees and, and else with commission, I'm actually going to be making you more money because I can market it better i can do all kinds of things better for you you'd make more money if i sold the property if that's something you want yeah yeah and that is right here um it's 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 right here uh this, yeah this is it um so the national association of realtors did a survey and they started this i think it was 2014 but they've been keeping stats on this ever since and so the average fisbo home sold uh, for 2,008,700, while well, the average agent assistant home in the same markets across the country sold for 235. And so there's reasons for that. Um, this is about 11% spread there. So assuming you paid a, a commission of 5% on a $235,000 home, 11,750 would still come out um, you know, you paid that as commission, you'd still come out about 14,550 ahead. So it's a win for everybody, but you know, they've been, they've been keeping track of that. You can, can you can confidently say that 11% is on average what um, studies and statistics have shown when you use an agent assisted house. Now, uh, Houses sell faster on FISBOs because a lot of times those get sold to relatives or friends in a, in a kind of a, um, hey, I, I, are you thinking about listing your house? Hey, I'll buy that. This is, they might even, we're going to be using an agent. And it was just a conversation. Hey, I'd like to buy your house. I didn't know you were going to sell. Let us buy it. And that's a FISBO, right? So those go into those stats. That's why they sell a little bit faster on average. But the dollar amount, the dollar amount, that's what we're really after there. Um, you can confidently say 11%. Awesome. Thank you. Great stat. Cool. So, um, Carlos, let me ask you a question. What, uh, and I know you're getting, you're implementing this right now. Um, if you had the expired listings and you had the FISBO things going, um, you know, what, how are you thinking about setting this up with regard to your schedule? So what I've been doing, uh, which is interesting, so I think you did it, what, three weeks ago, you did a FISBO training. I believe that was when you were doing it. Uh, and since then, I've been doing it at least once or twice a week, uh, going through Zillow and kind of getting those 45 plus days properties. And it's been super interesting as far as the responses that, that you know, the type of people that you're getting a hold of and what they're saying to you as far as, hey, you know, this is why I'm not going with an agent or this is why I feel it's worth this much or whatever. Um, I just found it to be really interesting, but I'm doing it right now once or twice a week with already multiple conversations with people that I talked to two weeks ago uh, and just following up and definitely to basically, you know, they're starting to feel the pain and I feel them coming around and more than likely being able to do at least a, what, what did you call it? The, uh, where I can at least just get that uh, commission for myself, even though it might not be on both sides or whatever, if I find them a buyer. Yeah, and the, and the trick is you may not get them on that first call, but as their house gets listed longer and you stay with them, because the average agent is going to fall off, right? The average yeah. agent is not going to keep the hustle up like you are or anybody else here is. So you may not get them today, but 
but you're going to get them in 45 days when they realize, hey, this is not going anywhere. I need to bring in a professional. And that's why you need to stick with them. So, yeah. And one thing I'll say, John, uh, just on the stuff that you talk about and you train on when it comes to sales, just the sales aspect of things, objection blocking and being able to come in as the different person. Uh, Number one, with FISBOs and expired leads, uh, expired listings, I think one of the biggest things you can do in there is number one, build rapport. Yeah. Because every other person, every other person that's not doing it very well or is just kind of at an agency where they're handing them a list saying, hey, sit down, call these expired leads, go. And they're just on the phone, just cranking out, dialing out. Um, they're usually not building a, any rapport. They're just kind of getting on saying, why aren't you listing it with somebody? I can list it better. I can do it better than you. You yeah. know, you're, you're, you're going to mess up and be wrong by doing this. And they're kind of, you know, they're pushing them hard, maybe even being a car salesman. But as opposed to going in and having some rapport, maybe even talking about stuff that has nothing to do with the house just yet, just finding an in, finding that angle, just talking to them. Uh, one of the first physicals I, I uh, talked to was Lady in Hunter's Green, not even two miles from my house. And she's listing it. And it's just a sweet little old lady who's just like, I want to save money. I know I need a new roof. I'm $10,000 behind in taxes. Like I found out so much information about her and her roommate, her kids live in New York. I mean, I just I have so much information on her that she called me back to literally just talk about stuff, about something that her daughter said. Uh, and then she asked her attorney and then she's like, well, I thought I'd ask you, Carlos, what do you think about this? If I fix the roof and you know, what do you think I can get it for then? And it was just interesting and they're coming back, but building rapport was the best part of the sale or the sales process because I didn't really have to sell. I'm just now talking to her and having a conversation. So I think that's what a lot of agents or a lot of people call and they just start to go at them. Why don't you just talk to them and say, what's up? How are you? You know, what's your situation? Uh, and then maybe, maybe I could help. I don't know. Yeah, that you bring up a good point there. Not only uh, it just building rapport and, and talking by way of communication, but also giving value. It sounds like you gave value to that person. And when you're giving more than just asking for the sale, um, you, you know, it's a different, it's a different approach. Like when you give value all the time, especially if they get into your CRM and you're communicating to them on a regular basis or they're on your social media, and um, they want to they want to keep going back to that because you're getting giving them value. Um, then it then it's not a sale. Uh, it it turns into a transaction with friends um, kind of thing, and you're still getting compensated on it, but it's not so car salesman like like you just mentioned. The other thing that is really interesting, man, that module number five. Uh, I'm telling you, that's really really powerful, and I'm not here to brag on myself, but. Um, it, it's, it's powerful because it teaches you the sales side of things. And so what Carlos just brought up there was most agents don't have that sales skill yet. You'll get it and you can develop it, but it does take practice and it does take a little bit of uh, kind of thinking. You know, sometimes uh, with other companies, you'll get a script and they'll hand expire listings over and they'll say, hey, go call all these. And they'll use a script they'll use the script, but they'll get an objection that they don't know how to handle it. And it, it's dead. It's dead on arrival. That's why all, that's why when you're talking about people that have been in this business for a long time, they hate office time starting out as an agent because they get these tasks of cold calling and it's not, it's cold calling is terrible. Like, you know, especially when you don't have a system. And so that's why this makes a little bit different, but I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, and I'm going to wrap this cause I got to get on a, uh, another call here. I'm here to tell you, if you implement these two strategies, the one from yesterday, the one from today, you're going to uh, have a nice foundation to get at yourself to base camp, which is five to eight closings a month. And in my opinion, that completely changes the financial profile of most, if not all, real estate agents in their first you know, year, 18 months, 24 months coming into the business. Now, it does take a little bit of time to put in place. It does take a little bit of practice and effort, but with that hard work, you can certainly make this happen. So with that, I am gonna wrap the call for today. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Uh, Success has everything to do with failure and life is as simple as you make it. So I want everybody to have a great week. If you need me, I'm here. Uh, Just reach out and we will talk real soon. Thanks a lot, everybody.